Welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to show you a cardiovascular sign in a respiratory case. And uh, this video is interesting because in a respiratory disease, we found some cardiovascular abnormalities. And later on, after investigations, the cardiovascular system came out to be perfectly normal. And in the video, during the process, I will tell you what interesting findings and what did we conclude from this clinical case. Though some of the aspects of this clinical case you cannot perceive because some are auscultatory findings and some are inspectory findings. So I will be more concentrating on the inspectory findings and the, dis uh, and the discussion of this case will be a little bit interesting. Now if we come closer, this young man had suffered from pulmonary tuberculosis 5-6 years back and he took AKT and he presented to us with cough with some low respiratory infection. Now let us see the inspectory findings of this case. If we see there is a little bit depression of the left side of the shoulder, there is a little bit drooping as compared to the right. There is a slight drooping as compared to the right. Secondly, now if we now if we close up, we can see there is retraction or more flattening, I would say there is retraction of the infraclavicular area more as compared to the right side. So number one, drooping of shoulder, retraction of the infraclavicular area as compared to right side. Now you can see the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid is more prominent as compared to the right side suggesting that the trail sign is positive to left. If I now am palpating the trachea and I can see that yes there is slight deviation of the trachea more towards the left side. Okay, now let us make the patient stand for some important findings in the back. We can see the spinoscapular distance. The spinoscapular distance is appearing less on the left side as compared to right. The vertebral angle of the vertebral border of the scapula is more prominent. Now let us take the decubitus for looking at these signs. We can see here again, we can see the spinoscapular distance is less as compared to the right side. Now take a look of the spine. This is the cervical lordosis it is maintained, thoracic kyphosis maintained, lumbar lordosis maintained. So there is no significant kyphoscoliosis visible in the spine. Okay. So with this respiratory signs, whatever we could, uh, the tilted signs we described, it suggests a fibrosis of the upper lobe, of the right of the left upper lobe. These are the findings. Now coming to the second part of this video. Now the second interesting part, after examining when we look at the precordial area in this patient, we can see the precordial area in the, this area is pulsating, there are pulsations, visible pulsations. We can see the visible pulsations here. Now this makes the case more interesting. Apex beat was palpated and it was found to be located in the normal position inside the left clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. But this parasternal area and in the second intercostal space, pulsations are present. Now we went for the parasternal heave, which was present and intercostal, second intercostal space, pulsations were well palpated, translating these cardiovascular findings to be as if the patient is having right ventricular dilatation and pulmonary hypertension. So, when we auscultated this patient, there was an ejection systolic murmur which was present in the pulmonary area along with the splitting of second heart sound. There was a wide split of second heart sound, though not fixed, it was not fixed wide, but it was a variable splitting of the second heart sound. So we presume that maybe the first commonest differential diagnosis of this case was an ASD 
which is having say little bit of pulmonary arterial hypertension and with effect on the right ventricle there is a wide variable sp splitting of the second heart sound so we went for an echocardiography ecg ecg did not show any findings of right uh, uh, features of right bundle branch block right axis deviation prolonged pr interval or anything ecg was normal we went for the echocardiography echocardiography was perfectly normal that brought us to the question mark here why there are pulsations here in the parasternal area and in the second intercostal space we considered the first possibility is it a straight back syndrome now straight back syndrome is a condition where there is a normal loss of kyphosis of the thoracic spine the thoracic spine becomes straight that compresses the ap diameter of the chest so along with this compression the great vessels and heart they are compressed so there is a functional ejection systolic murmur which comes in a straight back syndrome but now we examine this case there was no loss of spinal curvatures it was maintained so probably philosophically we concluded that because of this massive fibrothorax here this has been compressed the chest wall when this compressed the chest wall the same thing is happening inside the heart also the heart has gotten compressed and that ejection systolic murmur is a functional flow murmur of the compression of the flattening and the retraction of the intercostal spaces here and the fibrothorax is compressing the red vessels causing a ejection systolic murmur so this is another interesting finding apart from straight back syndrome we may get functional ejection systolic murmurs in a case of severe fibrothorax now we have ruled out anemia because hemic murmur would be another important thing anemia with ccf hemoglobin was perfectly normal his hemoglobin is 12 gram per cent so the importance of this case is this was tricky and this is a this discussion we had it is a very tricky situation where a hypothorax is causing a functional murmur because of retraction and compression of the great vessels